Hello, my name is Jožek and in this video I show you how to make an interaction system using the new input system from Unity. With this system we will be able to see the interactable names. Then we can interact with them, like opening or closing a chest. We can pick up items. And you can also speak with an NPC. So basically you can include any interaction you want. By the way, I'm using in this tutorial the finite state machine character controller and the combat system from my previous videos. You can download them in the description. They are not necessary for the tutorial, but you can easily integrate them. For example, like killing an enemy and then take them for take uh, all their loot. As you can see here, I'm picking up a sword and a shield from the skeleton. So, I'm here in the editor. As you can see, I can move around and I have already the objects here like chest, items, weapons, arrows and the NPC. But I cannot interact with them. I also don't see the name of them. So, that's what we have to code here. But first, uh, make sure that when you have the uh, new input system installed that you go under input system player controls you have to assign a new action or define a new action interact and it's uh, from action type button keyboard E for the binding so when I press E then I will interact with something So let's start with our first script. It's the interactor uh, for the uh, the player. Player is here the interactor, and he interacts with an interactable. So we define these two scripts right from the beginning. Right click, create C sharp script interactor. Let's also create a new folder. So it is it's a bit of a mess. Interaction system. Interactor, dragging that in this. And here also C sharp script. Interactable. All right, let's start with the interactor. So this is our code. Uh, that's a lot to cover, so let's start right from the beginning that we of course are uh, checking with an either raycast or I'm using here a spherecast. Uh, why spherecast? Because I think that only checking only with one ray is not so precise. So the spherecast is actually working like a much bigger ray, more like a cylinder. So we have here, of course, our origin, it goes from the camera, then it goes direction forward from the camera, and we have here an interaction radius, so this is uh, like uh, how thick is the the beam or the cylinder. Uh, it is set to 1, and how far does it go, that is here the max interacting distance, as you can see here. Then we are checking uh, which objects we are um, actually here hitting so with the layer mask, in the start function we can see that we only want to interact or to, to check with interactables, enemies or NPCs. Uh, of course you can change that as it fits in your project. Then our interaction or interact action is from our interact action here. That it's the, the key button E. And when we perform it, so when we click the E button, then we are calling the interact function. So that's why we have to assign them here. Okay, then next we can see, okay, when we are hitting something that is an interactable enemy or NPC, what we are doing? Well, we first check, does it have an interactable component? So that's the next script. So does he really have all this logic of an interactable on them? There we are setting it to our target. That's not defined now, but we'll get to that soon. And 
and if it's not well, sorry if you're not hitting anything sorry then we are of course setting our intangible target again to null so we have to target uh, off what does this target on or target off actually uh, do well it will show us the text it will show us the text that we can see what we are now uh, hitting with our sphere cast and with what can we interact now the interact function that we are assigning to our action inter action action <laughs> is defined here here we checking first that we actually have an interactable if not then we say well there's nothing to interact and if we have this uh, if we can see the text that we can interact with something then we will check the distance are we close enough right that's every distance we are seeing is it actually close enough for the interaction distance like i, I change this distance the, depending on the interactable and if that's the case, well then we are calling the interact function finally from our interactable target. So that means that whatever the interaction is, it's called in this function here. Then I'm drawing some gizmos to see something uh, in the editor for debugging. And don't forget if you are always assigning a method to a uh, performed action here in the um, uh, input system, then you always have to unassign it. So that's because every time we initializing this object, then we are assigning it. So it can be the case that we assign it multiple times and that will uh, cause some bugs. So we always, uh, when this object gets destroyed, then unassign it. Now back in our editor, we get a bunch of error messages, but uh, let's ignore them at the moment. And we open up our interactable script. Now that's the code for interactables. Of course our interactable has a name. Then here's the interaction distance from before. That's where we check, okay, are we close enough? And uh, actually, can we interact with them? This is the case for, let's say we want to see a name for the uh, enemy, for example, we want to see that name, but we don't want to interact actually with them when we press uh, the button E. So we can toggle this to false, this boolean. We have here an interact interactable name text. So that's um, the, the, the UI element that we will define later. And the canvas here. We will search for the canvas and then later it will get uh, displayed. Here are the, the corresponding functions. The target on that shows us the text and the target off that actually hides the text again. The interact function from before that, that we um, trigger when we are close enough and pressing button E, etc. that is here again checked. Is it actually an interactable? So that's why this boolean here is important. When it isn't inter interactable actually, then we call the interaction. And as you can see, that's a protect virtual function. So virtual means we can overwrite them if we inherit from this script in, an, uh, in, uh, in a different class. And protect means it's like a private, but uh, we can only access it when we inherit from this this method. Again, so on uh, on draw gizmos that we can see in the editor for debugging, like okay, are we are hitting it or not, and so on. And of course, on when we destroy this indictable, uh, like when we pick it up and we want to destroy it, then we also have to target off again otherwise we will see always the interactable name text here it will always be shown so we have to target off so back in the editor we can see another uh, error message here so that we are missing the interactable name text so of course when we have here our ui elements i have one for the screen space canvas so screen space is that's what you can see always here right on on the right side here on top, I can show you it's like in which state we are for my state machine. And I have a different one here, a world space canvas. And this world space canvas then will be, as name it says, will be rendered in the world itself. So make sure that you have a render mode set to world space for our name text not 
not to screen space like it is here. That's important. Also the event camera, you have to, you have to choose that your main camera. So let's create then a new uh, empty object here. Create an empty object. And we call this one then interactable. And here we create our interactable name text. So we are not uh, opening right away. Um, under the interactable, I will create again an empty game object and calling it the interactable UI. And here we will also add the text from a text mesh pro. So and text UI. Here we can change the font size to 30. Enable overflow character and let's create a small outline, underline, yeah, we, and let's open up this script, where is it, here, under, our intactable name text. Here's the script for the intactable name text. So as you can see, of course, we need our text element from the text mesh pro, and then we get that from uh, get component in children. We also need our camera. That's of course for to see the, the position of our, our text. And from right beginning, when we start the function, we hide the text. So what does hide text mean? It just sets the text to to nothing. And when we show the text, then of course we have to check which type of interactable is it so like if it is the pickup item then we of course changed here the name for, from the text to, to the name of the interactable and we also uh, give like this e button to pick up right so to say okay we picked this up when it is a chest then we check is it open is it closed and then we can close button or open button gets shown same for the loot or for speak with the npc and if it's no no nothing of this kind then it will just give the name like for example the enemy like the skeleton warrior. Then last function is the set interactable name position. So when we put in just uh, as an input here, we get our interactable, then it actually goes and try to get a box collider or for more human-like uh, for NPCs or for the skeleton has actually a, a capsule collider. And we try to get this collider and then we are doing some simple maths to actually get the position from uh, f for the uh, for the name text right we get to the, the transform dot position vector up and then we get the from the box collider the the y bound size and then uh, it's just to get a nice position for it so it's normally it works really good with the collider if the interactable has actually no collider then we print the error message no collider found so that we know when we are in debug mode or in the editor right to, to look for some errors that that's not working every interactable should have an uh, a collider and so i should also work with our interaction system okay back in the editor i will then create these scripts here so we don't get this error message anymore so the first one is the pick up item the next is the interactable chest then the interactable loot the interactable npc and that should be it bigger right npc loot chest so we still get this error message here for the interactable uh, chest that's why because we are checking here if it's open and so there's actually no logic in it so i guess we can start with this one it's also here on the left side our first interactable the interactable chest let's open it up so this is the code for the interactable chest uh, of course it has an animator so that we see the animation from it 
we have we can also lock it up so if we want then like to open it with the key and so on but it's not i'm not using it in this tutorial so maybe later the only important thing is the is open and it's just some basic scripts here so the important part is the interaction we have like first calling the uh, from the uh, our, our virtual function the base function interaction and then we are overwriting it with this part here so the second one is if it's locked so i just for the sake of this tutorial we're ignoring this one we are just looking at the first if uh, the second if here sorry so if it's open if it's not open then we open it and also print opening the chest and if we are if not then we are closing it so we can trigger this one uh, in both direction now what's happening when we open it also there's here to show loot and so on this is actually for some uh, for different tutorial with an actual loot system with the, the items and so on so first the interaction and then the item yeah when we open the chest and we just trigger in the, in the animator open chest and we setting is open to it is closed or we're just saying it's it's false and the same for the closed chest we are triggering close chest in the animator and then also setting is open again to the false value let's get back to our editor now back to our editor we add our interactable chest script to our chest here and we give it the name chest uh, is log chest id is open as i said it's for a different tutorial not for now and don't forget we have the player here so let's also add the interactor script to our player we have the max interaction distance radius can leave it like that so yes let's play it and see if it actually works and yes it's working but there's still some bug let's see in the scene manager this is how the gizmos work so here's the camera so we have here our a sphere cast and this sphere is colliding with this interaction radius here okay so let me check what is the bug here it's not actually centered and yeah when we are here in text mesh pro ui we have to center our alignment and actually so that it looks better also to start from the bottom let's start it again and that looks much better here we can tweak also with a different size as you wish and then we rotate around it actually is changing the direction that works and when we press e then it will open the chest and we press e again it will close the chest nice it's working so let's uh, do also the scripts for the other interactables like for the next one should be the uh, pickup item Let's open it up. Here's the script for the pickup item. Um, as I said again, uh, we have already some lines here for the uh, item system. So what do we need here just for interaction system? It's an item name. Also, we set the interactable name to the well, our item name to the interactable name. And when we interaction, what are, what do we do actually here? We are not adding it to any in inventory because we don't have an inventory now or yet we are destroying the game object and we are just printing a message so here you can see already what will be in some follow-up tutorial so let's go back to our editor in our editor we go to let's say to our uh, potion here and we add the pickup item giving it some name like potion Again, this will change automatically when we have the item data. We don't have it now, so this will not work. Also, for item name here, we can also write like the uh, potion because normally this should go uh, immediately. This should change without that we are typing it in here. Let's start. And this also works. We see here, open the chest, and here, pick up the potion. So, next we will do the NPC. I open up my intactable NPC script 
Now that's the code for the indictable NPC. It's very, very simple. We just have an animator, we get the component from the animator, and then we are triggering this interaction function where we just say a print message like hello, unfortunately I don't have a dialogue system yet, and then we are uh, uh, triggering the, the wave uh, trigger in the animator. Here's also the point where you can start your dialogue system, like when you just have an event like okay open now a window or do something that uh, whatever your dialect system does maybe in a future vi video i will also cover a dialect system so that will be the point where i would start like right? you interact with your npc and then the dialect system or the trading window something will open up after this interaction back in the editor we go to our the scene view we have here our formal uh, citizen on the NPCs and we just uh, interactable NPCs adding it giving a name um, whatever I, I don't remember the name I just call it now NPC warning to NPC and when we press E we are actually speaking with them or speaking is like just triggering animation and then opening up the dialect system so how does this actually uh, looks in the animator it's also some very simple we have here player idle animation that gets played and then for parameters we have a condition for the wave trigger that we are triggering in uh, both direction so it is very similar to the opening chest we have a trigger for open chest closed chest and then we first go in the new state that is actually not playing any animation then we are going that is if it's open to this one open chest and if not then we are going here to close and open and so on so very uh, simple animation there now there's only one interactable missing and that's the skeleton which is a bit more complicated, but not that uh, difficult. If you actually follow my combat system tutorial, you should have this enemy script or this enemy model here with the script attached to it and the skeleton rector. And the trick is now that this enemy wire itself is just an interactable and make sure that you here have this is interactable uh, deselected so that we cannot press E on it when we are near. Well, we can press E, but it will just give us an error message. You cannot interact with them. Otherwise, it will be okay. What is the interact function and uh, interact with them even if it's not doing something? You're calling it. So make sure to disable the is interactable function so that you cannot trigger the uh, interact function. The interactable name is here like also uh, just enemy, enemy uh, or a skeleton, what is the name, skeleton warrior, so skeleton warrior, and that's it are for the real enemy, but when it dies then we spawn this rectal here, so let's open up this rectal, and this rectal here when it uh, falls down then it actually is an interactable loot so that's the one that we have to change here and so let's open that uh, script so that's the script for the interactable loot uh, as you can see here we are actually doing not that much we just when we are uh, pressing e then we're giving a text okay uh, unfortunately you can't take my loot yet again the same for, like for the chest when we have real items a real inventory system and you can also open up a window a window here for now we are just destroying this this component and we also disabling the collider like we can loot the enemy just one time and after we took his loot then this will get disabled so if he has a box collider we are setting the box collider to false and when he has a capsule collider then we are also setting it to false Otherwise, you give an error message, and this one should not should not come. Otherwise, there's something really wrong with our code. Here, you can have a sneak peek to our next tutorial where we have events. We are trying to get items. 
in the editor, again, we have injectable name. We can have the same one here, skeleton warrior. Now this one is an injectable. Now we can press E and we can loot this enemy now. There's one uh, really simple trick to get also his sword and his shield. When we open this um, skeleton rack doll here in the prefab mode, then we can see here we have the shield and sword just attached to it. So all we have to do is just say, okay, this one is also a uh, pickup item. So it's also a pickup item and we call it, yeah, sword or skeleton sword as you want. Oh no, this one is the shield. Sorry. Call it shield. Actually, I just changing the item name should be enough, but for now I'm doing both. Also this one. That's the sword. It's also a pickup item. Alright. Oh, I don't know why it's not working for now. Must be something really simple to check. But let's just play and see if it's working. Yes, we see the skeleton warrior name. He's after me. And when I get him down drops we can see skeleton wire loot so press e to loot again uh, the difference to this near yeah, speak or oh, where was it my potion here pick up here yeah, open so that's working as intended and i can press e now i just put uh, my sword away press e working and when i here have hover over the sword i can see I can pick up the sword and the shield. Awesome. Everything is working as intended. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned something new. And as always, if there are any questions, feel free to write them down in the comments. I try to respond as quickly as possible to them. In the next video I will show you an item and inventory system to actually use this interaction system in a real way. Okay, see you on the next video. Bye. Subscribe to this channel where it takes another 8 months for the next video.